Hello and welcome to the second lesson of the DriveDM Tech Training and in this one we're going to cover the installation of DriveDM itself. So when you're ready to download the software itself, uh, go ahead and go to drive.com and use your MyDrive account to log in here. And then when you go to the download section, you'll be able to select DriveDM and then you'll be able to download the software as well as some of the documentation and you can also access the uh, FAQs for DriveDM in the support and services section. You will also need a license for the database which you'll need to get from us so contact us beforehand um, and we can help you out with that while you're doing your evaluation or if you're doing a showroom setup we, we probably would have sent you the license along with the other information. So yeah, go to Drive and download the software. Uh, I think the setup should be around uh, 670 megabytes. Um, it's pretty large, but there's some built-in components there. So now that I have it downloaded, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and run it. And uh, as I said before, this is the in-house version that we're going to train on. Uh, there is also a hosted version of DriveDM, which there will be a supplementary video to show you how to set that one up. So I'm going to run the setup from uh, a drive folder that I already have for drive image and drive print. Um, that's important because I want to make sure that the application has access to everything inside of the folder and also that the user that I run the services as has uh, administrative read write access to this directory. I'm also going to run it as administrator. It's always a good idea, especially in a customer environment. So there's a couple different things that are going to going to happen here. The first is that the setup is going to extract uh, and create a folder called DriveDM setup files from the same directory that you've run the installer from. And in that setup files folder, you'll see uh, a couple different uh, components like .NET, OpenOffice, the Drive database, uh, the Drive application, the Drive setup. Pretty much everything that's going to be run is going to be set in this DriveDM setup files folder. Um, the Java framework, all that kind of stuff. And uh, that's going to stay there after the install, but there are a few tools in there that you can use afterwards that are optional. Um, so you want to keep that folder uh, as long as you have DriveDM running. So here it's going to ask me where I want the application layer to be. And there are three things that are going to get installed here. One is the application layer for DriveDM, which is the web server and all the, the drive bits and pieces uh, for configuration and maintenance and managing the application and actually the application itself. Um, the other thing is the DriveDM database. It's called Dr. Doc. It's an object-oriented database that resides here locally and everything is stored and backed up in containers uh, where the data is self-contained with the metadata. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, for the backup and everything, but yep, no SQL server is needed, no SQL is running, it's all uh, a built-in object-oriented system. Uh, so that database is going to get installed, and the third thing that's going to get installed is the first database itself, so the first blank DriveDM database that you're going to use. You see here that it's licensed based off the IP address, uh, or at least it's, it's locked based off the IP address. Um, if you're not sure that you have a static IP, you can put in, uh, you can use that loopback adapter button. And what that's going to do is it's going to build in a Microsoft loopback adapter that has a, a static IP address. It's pretty much just like a little redirect. And you can use that. Um, here it's asking me for the licenses for the database, which you should get as a part of an order or as a part of the um, showroom setup. So it's going to go through real quick and install the DockerDoc database. And here you see it's asking me which one of my network interfaces I want to register against. Um, if the IP address changes, then you'll have to manually go and reset the, the, data, the database piece, which is why we recommend using the loopback adapter, because that will never change. Here you see it's a 169.0.0.1. Um, and so I already had one, so it didn't ask me if I wanted to set it up, but uh, it should pop up. and recommend the loopback adapter. If there's an update needed to the database, it'll go ahead and walk you through that. 
You should need to enter the license codes again. Okay, pretty quick. Okay, so here's an important piece, and, and it, you see it waits before it lets you say okay because we want you to read it. And what it's doing here is it's asking you where you want to install the data itself. So you're about to install Drive DM database files, they contain your data. Select the drive, um, preferably a drive with a fail safe. So there's a lot of different backup methods here. Um, the best one is obviously um, some sort of image level backup where we're taking a whole snapshot on a time or we can roll it back. Um, that means we could back up the whole drive and revert back at any point, sort of like a, like a time machine on the Mac if you have one of those. Um, but there's plenty of different server applications that you can get that'll set that sort of backup for you. The other is a, a file level backup, which is where we choose certain directories for an application to backup on a schedule. Um, that's also a possibility. There's a few other things that we'd want to do here uh, within DriveDM to make sure that none of the data gets corrupted when you do the backup. But you know, the most important thing up front here is just picking the right place to put it. Um, first, I can pick a, a drive here. I only have one. I'm going to put it in the C drive. Um, I'll go ahead and put it on the root of the C drive. And let's see, maybe I'll, I'll put it in this thing called DriveDM database, which I had before, and I'll put it in data. Uh, otherwise, it'll create that for you. But there's where you can pick a, a separate physically attached drive. So right now, it's installing the database, uh, the first blank database. Um, if you are backing up a system or reinstalling the system from another server where you want to use the existing database, you could cancel through the database setup piece, and uh, you could just import the other database once the application is set up, but in this case we'll create our first one. And it'll first update the, the database, it'll check everything, it'll clean the database, make sure that there are no uh, corrupt files in it, make sure that everything's okay. Um, it's also going to start the services here. It'll create a setup folder on the desktop for this user, and I'll show you that in a sec. Um, it'll also check once we're finished here uh, for any updates online to the drive server um, so we can check if there have been any new releases since we ran this, this setup, which is always a good idea. Um, here's a database update, which we can also schedule to run nightly or weekly so we can clean up the files, uh, make sure there's no wasted space, make sure there's no corrupt files in there or any links to, to data from the documents. Okay, so the update's finished. Uh, and here it's the last screen, and I'm going to go ahead and run the DriveDM service controller. The service controller is the application that you can use to control the services and the licenses and some of the main settings. Um, it'll pop up right away with the license configurator because it's the first time that I've run it. Um, you'll see here that it's actually grabbed my customer information because I have also Drive Image installed on this computer. But if I needed to enter it uh, from scratch, I could do that. Remember, it'll validate your email address. And here's where I can get trial licenses, or I can reload my license inf information from server or enter a new license code. Um, the only difference with DriveDM and our other products is that you need the database license. So you're not able to just get a trial on your own. You need to contact us, but I'm more than happy to help you. Um, configure it the first time and give you some test database licenses. So here I'm just going to reload the licenses from the server. Um, remember if you're reloading it from the server you can only flip it uh, I think one time from one server to another and it should deactivate the licenses on the old server. It's made for if a server goes down or anything like that. So I have one license for DriveDM. Uh, remember that there are two different types of licenses. There's a named user license and there's also a concurrent user license. Uh, a named user license means that one person has a license always associated to themselves and they can log in and out whenever they want. Uh, a concurrent license is more like a seat. So if I have five concurrent licenses, I may have 100 users in the system, but only five of them can log in at any one time. So the first thing that it's going to ask you to do is to set up the um, 
email settings so that it can send an error message if something goes wrong, if the services stop. Uh, I would definitely recommend that in a production environment. Um, so once you've done that, you're ready to go. It should be running, and uh, the only thing left to do is configure it. So that was lesson two. I think that'll probably be the longest. Stay tuned for the configuration videos.